Welcome back to my Final Fantasy XIV drama series. Today's drama story is about the blame game. If you enjoy these kinds of videos, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. I had a friend group that started playing Final Fantasy XI together. The game started to change to keep up with modern MMOs. So we wanted to try another MMO because we loved Final Fantasy XI and it had changed so much. Final Fantasy XIV was announced and we were really excited and we decided to keep playing Final Fantasy XI until Final Fantasy XIV was released. A week before the launch of Final Fantasy XIV, my family and I fell on hard times and I could no longer play XI. A few of my friends went ahead and started playing Final Fantasy XIV 1.0. Uh-oh, 1.0. Well, some of my other friends insisted on waiting for me, although I had no idea when I would be back. Needless to say, 1.0 did not live up to their expectations. So back to 11, they went. Oh yeah, because like 1.0 was, was not good. And then they had to rework it. And then ARR was announced. Just as things were getting better for me and my family. Eventually, we got settled and I applied for the final closed beta test before the open beta and then launch. As we leveled up, we started talking about forming a static for upcoming Binding Coil of Bahamut release. We knew a handful of fellow 11 migrators and slowly started to figure out who would play what and the times everyone had available. Oh, those seem like exciting days, right? Like being one of the first few players in Final Fantasy XIV, planning your first static for the first raid tier back then. What were those days like? I can only imagine. We were missing a second tank and a second healer. The friend that was more or less the FC and the static leader brought in someone I had only met briefly in 11 end game content. He became the second tank and with him he brought an IRL friend of his to be my co-healer. Let's call them Mason and Alex. We raided through Binding Coil just fine for the most part. The off tank Mason showed a bit of a temper as we progged turn 5, calling people idiots a few times and then apologizing when we stopped to talk about mechanics. Uh-oh. Calling people idiots? Oh man, I will not stand for that. Can you? Can you be in a static where someone's just like, you idiot! OP said they're not even that close to them, they just know of them. The whole raid tier lasted us nearly to the second coil with only a month and a half to finish gearing and take a break before it was released. We really, really struggled on just the first turn of second coil. Both tanks blaming everyone and each other. DPS blaming everyone but themselves. It was during this time when we moved our voice chat from mumble to Skype. I don't even know what mumble is. <laughs> Never heard of mumble, but whatever was before Skype, I guess. Everyone would talk over each other as they blamed everyone but themselves. And every time Mason was the worst of them. Without push to talk, we learned how often he called everyone idiots. He went so far as to tell people to kill themselves if they thought that Mason messed up a mechanic. Oh no. So they were like, hey Mason, you uh, you did that mechanic wrong. Kill yourself. That's, that's bad. That's bad. Gotta like, not even raid with this person anymore. Mumble was the team speak, but better. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, I remember Ventrilo. TeamSpeak and Ventrilo, I do remember. Back then, I was incredibly shy and timid and really struggled to give my opinions on things, even among friends. I could, I could see that. Sometimes you're just like really young and then you're like, 
I don't know how to address this situation. I don't know what to do. Is this normal, you know, when you're dealing with someone like that? But yeah, some people won't tolerate it at all, so... You shouldn't, but some people just don't know any better. Some people are either too young to know, socially awkward, introverted, or too scared or shy to say anything. So even though I knew my mistakes, there was no way I'd own up to them at risk of being explosively yelled at. Oh no, yeah, there's so OP is saying like, even though they, they know what they did, they didn't want to own up to it because they were scared. Also bad because you're playing, you're playing scared and you don't want to talk to anyone and you're static. Somehow we made it through second coil turn one and decided to take a week break before trying turn two. The leader told us that Mason was going through a lot and he wanted time to try and get his temper under control. I wasn't really buying it that Mason's temper was a sudden thing because of a few times he called some of us idiots in turn 5 of the previous tier months ago. It felt like the only reason we didn't hear it as often before was because of push to talk. But it was like Alex and I were the only people who remembered that. Alex said, He doesn't have that temper IRL. Intrigued, I immediately sent him a message asking, Really? He assured me he had never seen him like that in the three years he had known him. That it felt like he could be seeing his true colors after all that time. Hey, you know what? Sometimes certain games bring it out. Bring it out of people, right? Like maybe they've never been competitive that or that competitive in other games that you played with that person. That's why you didn't see it. After one week off, he heard that Mason was asking for another additional week off. During this time, Alex and I started chatting more, venting frustrations to each other about how turn one went and laughing at how ridiculous it was. It really felt nice to vent to someone who had been there, who had seen it all and agreed with me. Another week and Mason returned, but he said that he wouldn't join voice call. So we tried progging that way. While not ideal and the blame game was still being played a little, it was better with voice chat not being as chaotic and toxic. And everyone agreed at the end of the night that we did well. Next day, much to my relief, still no Mason in the voice. At first, one of the DPS started zoning out regularly and getting people petrified every time he got the debuff. And after the fourth time in party chat, we saw Mason say, Add me to the call now! <laughs> oh my god. Instead of telling Mason to calm down first, as one might expect, the leader added him to the call, and Mason immediately started yelling, calling all of us idiots, and saying how he doesn't know how we got so far in life if we can't understand simple mechanics and just going off. <laughs> how did you get so far in life? You can't even do this. Oh my lord. It's easier for us to laugh at this, but going through that and being in that voice call, that sounds like hell, okay? I I wouldn't want to be there, but it's when you read out something like this, it sounds funny. So, yeah. I didn't want to hear much of it, so I left the call, the duty, and the party. I was done for the night. Later that night, Mason apologized to everyone, vowing to do better. Then the whole thing became a repeating cycle for about a month and a half. No Mason in voice for a few days. Better progression. Someone messing up. Mason demanding to join the call. Leader obeying the demand every time for some reason. Mason yelling and insulting people, then apologizing and promising to do better. Oh my god, it's just a cycle. This FC leader or whatever is letting him go on call because I guess they're friends. Being timid, 
but also having PTSD from dealing with someone who had explosive anger in my family. All I could ever think to do every time was leave the voice chat, duty and party, which of course was followed by an apology from Mason later. Nah, these apologies are getting old, man. They're getting old. They don't mean anything at this point. He's not learning. This was getting to be too much. And one day I had enough. Just like before, the leader added him to the call as he demanded. And as he joined, before he could start shouting, I interjected saying, No, no, I'm tired of this bullshit. Either Mason needs to get a real grip on his temper or you need to replace me. I've had it. I don't know why you keep adding him into the call when we all know he's going to throw a tantrum. And while I'm at it, him aside, we all need to stop the pathetic blame games because this isn't getting us any farther. True. It's not about blaming people. Like, sure, yeah, people can own up to their mistakes, be like, oh, my bad. Everyone in the party needs to accept that everyone is going to make mistakes. It's part of the game. People are going to mess up. It'll wipe the whole party. It's normal. Laugh at it. Because it's about the journey together, right? As friends. And if your friend messes up, it's okay. If I mess up, it's okay. Everyone will go through it one by one. That's how it should be. There's no perfect. It's like sometimes when people want like, Oh, why did you do this? Why? Like, they just like get so angry at other people. It's just like, no, that's not how it's supposed to be. You gotta be accepting of everything. I proceeded to list all the mistakes I saw and whose mistakes they were, including my own and Mason's of the run that just wiped. Surprisingly, no one interrupted me or tried to rebut what I was saying. It's also like the moment you have to list it down also. It's so like, it's like you're being graded by a school teacher. That usually could lead to toxicity. Keeping a track of every little detail could make you sort of resent someone over time, I think. The rest of the night turned into a static discussion about if and how we'd move forward. The leader said it was too stressful to call anyone out on their mistakes and because of his ADHD, he couldn't call mechanics either. At the end of the meeting, everyone agreed to give Mason one final chance. Alex would call out the mechanics that were causing us the most problems and I would constructively call out mistakes anyone made. For an entire month, Mason didn't join the voice chat or type in party chat. He'd just show up for the raid, then leave as soon as we were done for the night. But he just couldn't stay in control. We made it to the third turn of second coil on the very first night in our Skype text group. In all caps, he was calling everyone idiots again. The leader asked me to give Mason one more chance. Like at this point, <laughs> I'm like imagining the leader just going like, Please, everyone in the static, please give Mason another shot. This is his like 30th time to fuck up, but like, please give him another chance again. The leader asked me to give Mason one more chance since it had been a whole month since the last time Mason exploded. I reluctantly agreed, but added that next time really was the final straw. And I reminded him that even if everyone else didn't mind his toxic explosions, that I would leave because I was just too sensitive to it and made it impossible for me to enjoy the raid time. Alex quickly added, Sensitive or not, it's not a fun raiding environment. A little amusing, maybe, but not fun. Who's with me? It's weird because it's like, this is supposed to be fun. If you're not having fun, you got to get out of there. Unsurprisingly, but thankfully, everyone but the leader agreed that if Mason did it one more time, he should be the one to go. After being silent as the rest of us continued to talk, leader finally chimed in with, yeah, I guess. Healers are impossible to find right now, but there's a good amount of tanks looking for a static. A buddy of mine has been looking for a healer for weeks now. 
As you may guess, the very next day, Mason blew up in a group chat again. Leader again asked all of us to give Mason one more chance. I think I'm going crazy with how many times I've heard the leader in the story say, please give him another chance. This time I refused, as did everyone else. Leader said, fine, but I'm making it clear that you all and you especially are why I have to kick him. <laughs> <laughs> this leader is, has like no backbone. He's like, fine, we can kick him, but it wasn't my idea. It was all of your idea. Yeah, this, this leader is like, is friends with Mason and doesn't want to look bad. That's why. And he says here, I would not have made this decision on my own. Which earned a moment of silence before we all empathetically agreed that was fine by us. <laughs> Yeah, the whole static is against the leader now. Like, yep, we want Mason out. And that was how I learned to speak up and be a little more opinionated more often, even outside of Final Fantasy XIV. That's good. I'm glad people learned to stand up for themselves. Yeah, kick Mason and the leader at this point. This is horrible. They went through months of this. We eventually went on to finish second coil, took a long break, and got into final coil a little late, and made it to turn two before disbanding for good. The end. Crazy static story. <laughs> That's a normal Discord call for me. No! Should, don't make this the norm, please, guys. We gotta, like, stop the toxicity. It's not gonna make the game fun. I, I will say, like, don't do this in a group setting with people you don't know. It's just awkward and toxic. I can understand being frustrated, but you can't let it get to that point where you're calling your friends or teammates idiots. Exactly, exactly. You gotta do something. Either you get yourself out of that position, because you're just not having fun anymore, or you can get rid of the people who are the problem in the static. So that some of you guys can still have fun. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about this Final Fantasy XIV drama story. If you have any of your own drama stories that you'd like me to share and read out anonymously, feel free to reach out to my Discord, discord.gg/patra.